National Geographic Kids presents Amazing Animal Journeys, Great Migrations, as seen as an, on the National Geographic Channel by Laura Marsh. On the move, when animals travel from one region or climate to another, it's called migration. Animals migrate in search of food or a mate. Migration helps animals survive on Earth. Many animals migrate, and this book is about zebras, red crabs, and walruses. Their great migrations are incredible journeys. Zebras. Zebras can live up to an average of 25 years. They can be as tall as 60 inches at the shoulder, and they can weigh between 440 and 990 pounds. That's about three to six adult men put together. Their tail is tufted at the tip, unlike a horse's tail. Their legs can run 35 to 40 miles an hour. Their hooves protect their feet over rough terrain. Powerful kicks can also fight off predators. Their coat is shiny and eliminates 70% of heat. Their mane, or hair, sticks up and is striped, unlike a horse's mane. Their mouth eats mostly grasses and roots. Their teeth deliver a painful bite used for protection and their stripes can act as camouflage to break up the outline of a zebra's body. Survival stripes. Every zebra has different stripe patterns, like a human's fingerprint. A newborn zebra learns its mother's pattern right away, so he can identify her. In Botswana, Africa, up to 30,000 zebras migrate every year. Thousands of zebras travel in herds and live in Magadikadi and Nyg Pan National Park. Scientists believe their journey is about 360 miles round trip. That's like walking across the state of Wyoming. During the dry season, the zebras stay near the Botedi River. It is the only water source available. All other water holes dry up around the river basin. Zebras eat grasses and roots. After several months, most of the nutritious food is gone. So when the rainy season begins, the zebras move east to the flooded salt pans. New grasses and new water holes spring up with the rains there. And the zebras stay five to eight months until the water holes dry up. Then they return to the Botetti River Basin. Water emergency. In recent years, cattle owned by local people were drinking the water and eating the grasses in the Botetti River area. But there was a problem. There was not enough food and water for all the cattle and wild animals. Zebras were getting pushed out. They had to find water holes further away from the Botetti River. This is a picture of the dry Botetti River basin. Zebras in other parts of Africa usually travel less than 10 miles from their water source to find food. But in this region, zebras had to travel as many as 21 miles. Sometimes zebras went without water for a whole week. Many zebras got sick and died. Weird but true, zebras can move their large ears without moving their body. This lets them find out and identify a sound without attracting attention. People decided to do something about this problem. In 2004, a large fence was placed around the Magadi Gadi and the Naik Pan National Park. Now the 150 mile fence separates the cattle and zebras so they each have their own territory. Also, man-made water holes with pumps were added around the Botetti River Basin. Weird but true, zebra skin is actually black and white fur makes the white stripes. Even under the white stripes, the skin is black. Scientists are studying the zebras and their babies, hoping that their numbers will grow. They want the zebras to be healthy for many years to come. Red crabs. Red crabs can live to be about 12 years old. They can get up to four and a half inches across and they weigh about one pound. They use their legs to walk. They have eight legs, four on each side. Their front claws are used to put food in their mouths. Their mouth eats fruit, seeds, leaves, flowers, dead birds, and even other dead crabs. They are scavengers. Gills and lungs used to breathe air. Adult crabs cannot breathe underwater. A scavenger 
is an animal that feeds on dead plants and animals and items left behind by others. Weird but true. Crabs use almost the exact same migration route every year. On Christmas Island off the coast of Australia, up to 120 million red crabs migrate from the forest floor to the ocean every year. It is a long five mile journey full of danger. The red crab's body is built for life on land, but their young can only hatch in ocean water. So the crabs migrate to find a mate and release their eggs in the ocean. Red crabs leave their forest homes, and then second, millions of crabs climb down the steep cliffs to reach the ocean. Third, the males first arc to arrive, and then they are soon outnumbered by females. Four, females leave the burrow after almost two weeks. Red crabs come out of their holes, called these burrows, after the season's first big rain. They travel from their forest home for more than one week. They cross roads and climb down 40 foot cliffs. Finally, they reach the ocean. Male crabs are the first to dig the burrows. Then the females arrive and the males fertilize the eggs inside of the females' bodies. Males return to the forest while the females stay in the burrows for up to 13 days. Before dawn, the female crabs leave their burrows, enter the water and perform a kind of dance to release their eggs into the ocean. A female can release up to 100,000 eggs. Then they return to the forest. The eggs hatch into larvae in the ocean. After three to four weeks, the larvae change into young crabs and crawl up on land. The tiny crabs are about the quarter of an inch long, pink tide. When the baby crabs leave the ocean and walk towards the forest, they look like a pink tide of water. The babies know how to get to the forest by instinct. Danger. The red crabs face many dangers on their migration. Cars and other vehicles drive them over. Many drown in the waves and larvae get eaten by fish. Yellow crazy ants attack them. And some crabs get too hot in the sun and dry out. Helping red crabs. People are working to keep red crabs safe during their migration. Walls and tunnels have been built to funnel crabs under roadways, so fewer crabs get ran over by cars. Some roads are even closed during the migration. Weird but true. Crabs live in a forest burrow all year when they're not migrating. Only one crab lives in each burrow. Walruses. Walruses can live up to 40 years. They can be up to 12 feet long and weigh 3,400 pounds. Their skin appears brown or gray in the water, pink or brown when they're not in the water, and they have an air pouch that can be inflated to keep their head above water when they're sleeping. Whiskers. On their snout, these detect food on the bottom of the ocean. Tusks weigh over 10 pounds and are up to three feet long. Their lips and tongue are used to suck meat out of shells, and their mouth mostly eats clams, about 4,000 in one day. Blubber can be two or four and a half inches thick. This insulates their body from cold air and water. Their flippers, like rear flippers, are used to swim and move on land. Walruses in the Pacific Ocean migrate with the movement of the ice. The ice shrinks in in the summer and it gets larger in the winter. Walruses travel by swimming around the ice flows. An ice flow is a sheet of floating sea ice. When at sea or on ice flows, walruses stay in small groups. They form large groups when they're resting on land. There could be tens of thousands of walruses packed tightly together. Pacific walruses live in the Bering and the Chuki seas on the Wrangell Island. As the ice expands in water in winter, they move south to the Bering Sea. As the ice shrinks in the summer, females and their young move north with the ice to the Chuki Sea. Males often don't travel as far north. Some stay on land south of the Chuki Sea. Weird but true, walrus ears are small holes that are hard to see with all of their wrinkles. Baby walruses are born on ice flows during their migration north. They are called calves. At birth, calves are four and a half feet long and weigh up to 150 pounds. That's as much as two large adult dogs. 
weird but true, walruses can break through eight inches of ice just by banging it with their heads. Walruses are not picky. Though they mostly eat clams, they also eat more than 60 other species of sea life. Their food includes corals, worms, shellfish, sea cucumbers, and sometimes seals. Walrus, walruses fish in waters less than 300 feet deep. They find most of their food on the bottom of the ocean. They haul out and rest from feeding and swimming by pulling themselves onto ice flows. Mighty tusks. A walrus uses its tusks to move on land and make ice holes and to haul out of the water. Tusks are also used as protection against predators such as polar bears. Walruses in trouble. As average temperatures on the earth get warmer, walruses are losing their habitat. Arctic summer sea ice is shrinking from the Chuki Sea, and female walruses and their young can't move too far north with the ice because the waters are too deep for feeding. But if they don't move with the ice, there is little land to haul out and rest. This could cause walruses to drown. Lending a hand. Many people are working to help animals in their migration. The zebras of Botswana have more water since people put up that fence around the national park. The paths and tunnels made for the red crabs protect them on their journey to the sea. But there is no solution yet for the Pacific walruses. Can you think of ways to help them? Walruses usually swim four miles an hour, but if startled, they can swim up to 22. One way that we can help is to take good care of our environment. We can keep our oceans and rivers clean by not polluting. We can recycle so there's less trash on our earth. And we can use less energy by turning off lights when we don't need them. We can ride bikes or take public buses or trains instead of using more gas by driving. We can encourage others to help too. If we all do a little, we can all make a big difference. The end.